On this week's show, we introduce you to Northern Irish scholars, past and present, journalist Jane Ferguson, class of 2004, plus Angus Heron and Patrick Merrigan, class of 2019, talk to Assistant Dean of Admissions and Assistant Director of Multicultural Affairs for Campus Life, Felicia Aikens, and meet the technicians who bring the fall musical to life. Lawrenceville's 10-minute newscast begins right now. From the studios inside the Lawrenceville School's historic Pop Hall, this is L10 with Aiden Duffy. Hello and welcome to this week's show. Lawrenceville launched the James Merrill Class of 1943 Scholarship Program. The program will offer selected students a fully funded opportunity to conduct literary research, write creatively, and learn about the history and craft of bookmaking. Led by English masters Jeffrey Blevins and Maggie Ray, Merrill Scholars will begin a two-week residency in June and share their work with the school community at a conference next fall. Fifth formers Brandon Lee and Emily Guo, along with fourth former Sid Sharma, presented their research on plant diversity from Lawrenceville's expedition to Ecuador at the Jesneriad Society's 62nd Annual Convention in Framingham, Massachusetts. All three students, led by science master John Clark, received student convention grants. On Saturday, the Big Red Girls varsity water polo team captured first place in Flight 3 of the Beast of the East tournament. With over 40 teams competing, the tournament is the largest high school water polo tournament outside of California. On Thursday, September 27th, Jane Ferguson, Lawrenceville class of 2004, and Middle East correspondent for PBS, The New Yorker, CBS, and Al Jazeera English visited Lawrenceville. After her talk on the Middle East, she sat down with Annie Height, L10 Executive Director of News, to discuss journalism. And dignity cannot be achieved when you cannot afford to live. And across the Arab world, the right... So earlier you mentioned that it was your search for adventure that led you to the Middle East, but was there any particular moments or aspects in particular that led you to this region? Well, when I left university, I wanted to study Arabic because I was aware that it would be a, a skill that might be helpful. And to be perfectly honest, I just graduated in the middle of a global financial crisis and there were no jobs to be had. So I thought the best use of my time would be to study Arabic and of course the best place to study Arabic is the Middle East. What eventually led you to broadcast journalism? I've always known that I wanted to be a broadcaster. I, I wanted to work as part of a team. And for me, broadcasting is such a brilliant way to communicate. As I was young and I was reading the autobiographies and biographies of all these great uh, broadcast journalists was that they always worked in teams. I loved the idea of the camaraderie of working in a team and now that I do do that I really enjoy it. What's your advice to Laurentians hoping to pursue a career in journalism? There's no clear pathway anymore. There used to be a fairly set formula for how you did this, how you got your first job, how you worked your way up. It doesn't exist anymore. Don't be intimidated by that but see it as an opportunity to innovate. As a reporter in the Middle East, you've been in many a dangerous situation. Um, what motivates you to continue to put yourself in said uh, situations? What I'm motivated by is the story and telling the story and often between me and the story is a dangerous situation. And so I tolerate danger sometimes, not always. I tolerate danger uh, occasionally in order to get the story and very often the stories in conflict zones and the stories deep in very dangerous conflict zones are some of the most important because they are some of the most potent human rights abuses. And that is where journalism becomes even more important. Thank you, Annie. Northern Irish scholars and soccer players, Angus Heron and Patrick Merrigan, talk with us about life at Lawrenceville on and off the field. Well, um, if I wasn't in soccer then, I honestly, honestly couldn't tell you what I'd be doing. Put it in! Play, play! Look, it was good, like, it's good to be part of the team and we've enjoyed being, uh, being in all the practices since we've come in pre-season. Bit unexpected with the, with the heat and all pre-season, but uh, yeah, it's more intense than we're used to, I'd say, at least for me at home. There's a good balance of academics, uh, the challenging and athletics, the challenging, and then, of course, you have, like, clubs and 
uh, the social events, just uh, just yeah. an array of different things to do. Um, out here, the training, the training's a lot more intense, which I think is a really, really good thing because it means that you're really immersed in what you're doing. But um, and I suppose whenever, like back at home, if you're playing at a serious level, and the training's intense, but at a school level, we'd, we've uh, certainly I've experienced nothing like um, the level of commitment of playing every day. So, and I've enjoyed that, like I have. Back at home, I've played with some great players, but equally, equally here, there's been a lot of talent on offer. So, uh, hi, it's it's a, it's a fairly even um, level, I'd say, uh, in terms of what I'm what I'm used to. It's been really nice to see them kind of taking it all in at the same time as you know offering their own observations. Um, and just like everyone else on, on the squad, uh, working hard each day. I, I sort of came with an expe expectation that it might be um, just a building block to the university, but it's much more than that. Um, it's teaching me a lot of things already, and I'm only three weeks in, you know, and I'm very excited to um, get involved in all the clubs and keep keep working at the sport, keep uh, giving, giving my best to everything while I'm here and trying to offer something to the community as well as learning a lot from it. So it's been brilliant, yeah. The first luncheon dialogue of the year was held on Wednesday and featured a discussion about Islam and Islamophobia. After the discussion, we caught up with Felicia Akins, Lawrenceville's Assistant Dean of Admissions and Assistant Director of Multicultural Affairs for Campus Life. As a part of Lawrenceville's ongoing mission to educate its students about the importance of diversity and equity, members of the community gather on Wednesday afternoons in the Bunn Library for lunch and dialogue a weekly forum that allows students from diverse backgrounds to come together to explore and discuss pressing issues facing the world and our community. This week, I sat down with Ms. Felicia Aikens, Lawrenceville's new Assistant Director of Multicultural Affairs to discuss the importance of lunch and dialogue, as well as her goals for incorporating equity and inclusion into campus life this year. So thank you so much for taking some time to sit down with us, Ms. Aikens. Thank you. Uh, if we could just get started off talking about what your role is at Lawrenceville um, and where you're coming from. Great. So I work uh, both in the Admissions and Multicultural Affairs Department, and predominantly I work with student groups on campus, the Diversity Council being one of them helping structuring dialogue in our community and also helping uh, hold community-wide events that help bring people together. Could you talk a little bit about what happens at Lunch and Dialogue and the theme that you're focusing on right now? Yep. So Lunch and Dialogue is really an opportunity for any interested student to come together and learn about um, a topic relating to diversity. Um, so this week, for example, we were talking about religion and society focusing on Islam um, and Islamophobia and partly in reaction to the school-wide discussion about home fire that we'll continue to have. Looking forward in the year, what are some other events that you have planned focusing more on the ideas of diversity and identity at the school? Mm -hmm. So we have one major event each term. Um, the first one is Community Potluck, which is coming up in mid-October. Um, that's when we encourage anyone to bring in a dish that might be authentic to their culture or even just to their family. In the winter, we'll have an international night um, and we'll have different performances, lessons, groups, and again, more food. And then um, in the spring, we'll have Community Day. Is there anything that you think an average Laurentian can do to be more involved in diversity and equity and inclusion at the school? Yeah, absolutely. The first thing I would say is that I hope you know each Laurentian realizes that they have something to contribute to this conversation, no matter who you are or where you're from. That just leaning into your identity and kind of starting to explore your own identity means that you have something to bring to the table here. I would encourage Laurentians to maybe go to an event that they you know, read about on campus that they wouldn't ordinarily go to. Um, I think pushing ourselves outside of that comfort zone will allow all of us to be more ready, more receptive to more difficult conversations that might come up throughout the course of the year. With final preparations underway for next week's musical Year in Town, L10 caught up with technical artists behind the scenes. Stage management is a really, really cool job because you get to do a little bit of everything. And so a lot of the little things that um, that we do that not everyone knows about would be like, we're at every single rehearsal with the actors, um, but we're also at a lot of the different technician-based things. So we're kind of all around getting to know the entire show and just kind of being super involved in the process. And <laughs> day-to-day -day basis it's just a lot of communication with the cast with the um, technicians with the faculty but I just kind of see it as making sure that everything runs smoothly in the show and just really kind of knowing all the different aspects and helping piece them together I'll be sitting out um, in the house with my book and I'll be making sure that I take track of all the different cues that we have because during the show I actually call all the different like set change cues and the light cues and so I have to make sure that I am getting those down during tech week and so we'll run a lot of different things um, and so yeah we just run through the show and we make any changes that we have considering like the addition of tech. <laughs> 
Everyone who has a run crew position has been um, working backstage since preseason um, and spending time out of their days building the set and then in terms of lighting they spend a lot of time um, programming the different light cues. So that takes a lot of work. Costume shop works super super hard to work with all the actors. They do lots of different fittings and they put together beautiful outfits and so a lot of stuff happens. And then the orchestra I feel like they don't get as much recognition always as they deserve because they're always working super super hard um, to put everything together. It takes a huge team but it's really really incredible. Everyone is kind of doing a million different things you wouldn't really know that they're doing, but it's just a wonderful, wonderful thing. That is our broadcast for this first week of October 2018. From all of us here at L10, thank you so much for watching and good night.